Two and a half million American soldiers have been deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan over the past decade. More than 20,000 of those were from Indiana. While the wars have wound down, many veterans continue to pay a price, from physical injuries to PTSD and traumatic brain injuries. The extent of the problems has led to a variety of new and innovative interventions. For the next half hour, you'll see how the arts are being utilized to help veterans find relief in sometimes profound ways. Veterans Coming Home to Healing Arts is made possible by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Hello, I'm Kim Jacobs. And I'm Lee Danoon. WFYI has partnered with the Kurt Vonnegut Memorial Library and the Heron School of Art and Design to bring you stories of innovative programs that allow veterans to deal with their wartime experiences. For tens of thousands of veterans, simply returning home has not restored their sense of inner peace. The result, 22 veterans each day are taking their own lives. That tragic fact is the basis for a work of art created by combat veterans in Nashville, Indiana. Tourists flock to shop to see the leaves, and now there's something new drawing them to the center of town, a giant sculpture called Soaring. Once they're drawn in, and then they love and they appreciate the art, and then they read the plaque, it, it's a twofold. They have gratitude for the art piece, they're inspired, they think it's beautiful, and then they find out it was made by veterans for the community, for them. I think that will leave a lasting impression. Magnus Johnson is one of the people behind the sculpture, a former Green Beret who did three active duty tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. But coming home was a different sort of challenge. Magnus, is, he's unique. But when you hear his story over there, oh, you know, I don't know if I could come back normal. <laughs> he's, he, he had a, you know, he's done several tours. He's seen the worst of it all. So my friends started committing suicide, and I wanted to do something. I wanted to not let that just kind of slip into uh, nothing. 22 veterans commit suicide every day thus the 22 leaves. To raise awareness for this and other veterans' issues, Magnus founded Elderheart. We want to raise awareness about 22 veteran suicides a day in America. And uh, we wanted to raise awareness in a way that would uh, be lasting, that would have social impact, that could cross kind of different media gaps. And one of those mechanisms was public art. When you realize what you're doing, it's not just an art piece, it's, it's, a, it's a monument or a testament to a, a human issue that needs to be resolved somehow. Jim Connor is a sculptor, the engineer and designer of Soaring. The idea was to build this iconic kind of a sculpture right here with leaves, and so I built a prototype model, and uh, Magnus and I took it into the town, and they approved it, and we went back and forth, and so then it, then it was up to me to try to figure out how to, to take uh, 13,000 pounds of steel and turn it into something that looks like a living art piece. The sculpture itself is built by veterans and community volunteers. Working side by side, vets share their stories, and those at home are afforded a deeper appreciation. This is my hometown. I'm going to see it every day. And it's just an amazing thing to be a part of. It's very uh, uplifting. People being involved with people is, is you know, more, more therapeutic than anything, I think. Lots of people go and they'll just be like, oh, well, thank you for your service. And then it stops there. And, you know, I, talking and thanking is, is always important. But I felt like, you know, I, I didn't just want to stop there. I wanted to actually have, you know, my actions be backing up really what was coming out of my mouth and really being able to make sure that they really saw that there was a passion and, and importance placed on them. And I think the whole art experience is also very healing for these guys to work on things because it starts dialogue among them, you know, that I've been privileged to hear. It's good to have parades and honorary uh, events and such, but, um, we would like the longevity of uh, large standing installations. There's been tons of war memorials built, and this is not a memorial. This is a this is a way to like to pull people in with art, but then then to really throw something completely different at them to go. Oh, I didn't realize that. The conversation starts. Yeah, the plaque thanks the town. It thanks the people that live in the town. It thanks Jim Connor, Larry Webb, professional artist. 
and it thanks the American warrior, but it tells the truth, it tells the facts. You know, 22 veterans a day in America commit suicide, and people need to know. It's not just warriors that suffer from post-traumatic stress. It, it's, it's the woman who lost a son. It's the, it's the parents that have a son returning who don't understand why he's locked up in a room drinking alcohol every night. It's, it's the whole society suffers. You know, beauty and tragedy at the same time. Um, we hope that makes it digestible. Soaring is lifting spirits here, and Elderheart hopes to open the eyes and hearts of communities everywhere. Art is a mechanism to get involved in your community, to make something that's gonna last a long time, that's gonna shape the culture of a place you live in, that defines what's important. So anybody who puts their hands on it or touches it or adds to it is a part of that legacy. Not only does art help define our culture, it helps heal wounds from trauma that sometimes are not physically apparent. Chicago neuroscientist Dr. Lucas Konopka uses brain scans to help diagnose what parts of the brain have been impacted by trauma or whether trauma is keeping the right and left sides of the brain from communicating. Right hemisphere being involved in processing of emotional content. And if that information is somehow not transmitted into the left hemisphere, which is able to express itself verbally, that person will have difficulties uh, ex talking about their experience. Now, there may be other ways to get that experience out, and that way would be through art therapy. In 2009, Andrew Schneiders found himself far from the security of his Indiana home, on active duty in Iraq, living in a combat zone. You're getting shot at, and you're getting mortared. We got mortared all the time. Um, that becomes the norm. You get this complacency and this numbing sensation sometimes of what's going on around you. The mortars became less frequent as the mission evolved from one of combat to training Iraqi soldiers to oversee their own country. But surprisingly, Schneider's mental strain grew. You know, you're so used to just being run and gun and working all the time, and there's a huge self-worth, um, like you're really contributing to what's going on. And when that really slowed down, it was, it was a hard pill to swallow. Uh, about six months in, to my deployment, I would, um, I, I started noticing a change, especially in my aggression. Things got dark. And at first it was just like, you, you know, you just accept it and you know it's gonna kinda, you know it's coming, it's not a surprise. But when you can't shake it off and then every day gets worse and, and that violence comes out. Schneiders, once a music teacher at Avon High School, began putting pencil to paper, finding solace in the sketches he drew of his surroundings. You know, you're still seeing the, the scenery change and the colors and things, and then you start noticing that, and then you start, you know, uh, drawing what you're seeing and, and filling that, that void and that time with, with, you know, the creativity part of it and allowing that to come out. And, you know, making objects on paper and having that realization of uh, there's still beauty left in the world. When his tour ended, Schneiders returned to a once familiar world, but now everything normal, like socializing and driving in traffic, felt foreign and overwhelming. I wasn't responding well to family and friends and alienating myself when I shouldn't and finding myself in the corner of a room staring into nothing and, and not knowing how long I was there. And, and uh, my anger management was really a clear indicator. 20% of veterans from Iraq come home with post-traumatic stress disorder. You either want to be normal, so you fake your way out of it, or you just want to hide it and, and, and try to move on with life. But if you don't address it, it doesn't, I mean, maybe for some people it does. But for me, there came that time where I had to start addressing the issues and facing them so that I could get right, you know. 
Again, Schneiders turned to art as a source of healing. Through the Indianapolis VA Hospital, he signed up for a pilot art therapy project spearheaded by a VA doctor and the director of Heron School of Art and Design's art therapy program. One of our assignments, if you would, um, was to take these blank faces and we had to draw um, what we saw ourselves as before the deployment and then what we saw ourselves as after. So for me, I saw myself as this, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty dead on, <laughs> you know, just nice, uh, bald, white, mid Midwestern male. That was me, you know, and, and I felt very strong about that going in. I didn't think this would ever change. And then as time went by and um, I found myself as this person. To me, it was the toilet bowl. I was just spiraling down, and I, I went into a dark hole that I never thought I was capable of doing, like ever. I, I couldn't believe I got there. I haven't seen these pieces for a while, and seeing them again, it, I, I, I totally remember. I remember exactly I, those feelings, you know. And, and it's kind of rewarding, because I, I, I know how I am now, and I got out of that. Today, art therapy is used widely to help veterans deal with PTSD and traumatic brain injuries. For Andrew Schneiders, art became a means to express what he couldn't say out loud. I'm going full circle. I'm, I'm trying to come back to what I want to be, and, and I have that ability. We all do. We all have the power within us, but you, know, you just, you have to go out and seek it. And, and fix it. And it was surprising for me to, you know, to find art as the one of the main you know, avenues that I use to, to get out of that funk. You know, it's pretty cool. I see art therapy as being a creative outlet for things that we, especially as veterans, we, we suppress and we hide. When you're in the midst of war and something awful happens around you, you don't have time to deal with that right now. You've got to kind of stuff it and, and move on and take care of your mission and your tasks that you have to do. And then you have to deal with it later. Years after active duty service in the Indiana National Guard, Dusty, a retired Army Chief Warrant Officer 4, found insight and healing through art therapy at the Indianapolis VA Hospital. One of the um, things that we did in the art therapy group was um, the therapist came along and gave us each a ball of clay. And this particular session, I wasn't able to just kind of come up with a thought or an idea to do. And finally, the therapist said, just shut your eyes and just kind of go with it. So I did, and I just started uh, manipulating the clay. And I just started moving my hands and my thumbs and just whatever felt right. In the profession of art therapy, we're trained to use the creative process and symbolic or what we call nonverbal communication that's afforded when you're making art. So in the process of making art, you are able to access different parts of yourself, different feelings, different ways of thinking that you might not have access to when you're talking. What I came up with and was this ball of clay um, with a lot of holes in it. So I sat back and it was like, what does this mean inside? So I, I had to really delve inside and, and look at it. And I think to me it became the faces of depression. You could be fine one day and all happy and nice and something is said or done or something happens and you just fall into one of those holes, so to say. And if you're not able to climb right back out, then you could fall in another hole and fall into a deeper level. And there's actually one hole in the, in the um, project that goes in but doesn't connect to any of the others. All the other holes connect. But this one is, is, I think, represents the real deep depression that somebody could get into, and they don't feel like they can find their way out. 
it's very important to be able to put outside of oneself what you're dealing with because a lot of times we need that objectification. We need an objective presence to help us see ourselves. Engaging in art therapy, engaging in the creative process helps to synthesize both conscious and unconscious. Several weeks later I was looking at it and just kind of kind of taking it in and I realized that you know when you are in one of those holes if you turn around and look up or look out there's a light there is that yeah you, you may have a, a problem with depression but that doesn't mean you're always depressed um, there are lights at the end of the tunnel there you can find your way out uh, for periods of time and you can find people out there who can support you Dusty says pushing past her own resistance is sometimes the key to feeling better. I know I'd be sitting there in, in the art therapy class and I'd come in saying, I really don't want to be here. My back is killing me. My neck hurts, my wrists hurt, whatever. And, but once we get into the project, it was like all that just kind of goes off to the side and you can concentrate and focus on what you're doing. And for that short period of time, your body actually relaxes, your mind relaxes and um, it just gives you a, a sense of well-being for that period of time. What's really important is to offer and provide opportunity to engage in, in different ways of healing. And art therapy is a really strong, effective way that is shown by the people that have engaged in the process of doing it, that have done the work, you know? And so it is something that we would really um, like to continue to offer, and, you know, in, in through the VA system and through other veterans-related systems, you know, not just here in Indiana, but everywhere. Patients participating in theater where they can take on someone else's identity and express their emotions may be very therapeutic because it's not about them and yet it is about them. Uh, you know, we've had uh, patients who had difficulties talking about themselves and the idea was if you participate in uh, theater and you take on someone else's identity, can you do that? Oh yes, I can because it's not about me and in fact it is. to make different without changing into something else. Theater as a form of medicine. It's happening on stage tonight at the Q Artistry Performance of Altered, a VA medical research project starring one professional actress and six veterans struggling offstage with addiction and PTSD. So what I really wanted to do is find out whether something more immersive had a greater therapeutic value. I have a fear of standing up in front of crowds. I have a fear like going to supermarkets or going to the mall. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to kind of conquer some of my fear by doing this project. Kind of build a, a block so I could do other things. Darnell Cunningham is a retired army paratrooper and a near statistic. Um, I got to the point where it seemed that that was the most viable option I had to take my own life. This is Michael G., a Gulf War combat vet who knows that pain. You know, last year I, um, I was so depressed, I tried, I, I poured fuel all over myself. I was going to catch myself on fire. But because of the, uh, the help I'm getting at the VA, I'm, you know, I'm making a trem tremendous success. Who knew that being part of a live theater performance could lead to success? What can I learn from a book? And I came from a small fishing village in Trinidad that we didn't have electrical, we didn't have electricity. We didn't have running water in our house. And to get the opportunity that America gave me and my family is tremendous. If I have to pay a, a small price, you know, if I have to pay, a, if I have to pay this small price, 
for serving in the American Armed Forces and defending a country that I, that I come to love, I think it's worth it. Actually evaluating my feelings, that's something that I hadn't done in a long time. That was really dangerous territory for me and it wasn't safe. Each one of the characters in this play uh, had some sort of thing they were going through, some sort of crisis, and you know, kind of went to a personality change. And we really delved into what their emotions are, you know, to kind of step outside yourself and see, you know, how others might see a situation or a personality. I had an opportunity with these guys to express those things. Generally in life, my experience is that you didn't get those rewards and nobody really cared. But this really felt, it felt good. I think that, you know, healing isn't just in these men, it's, it's in our society and in our community. So it's really about, about kind of this reciprocal appreciation and, and positivity. You all did such a wonderful job. And I just wondered if you had previous acting experience. I, I realized I do a lot of acting every day anyway, <laughs> just being a veteran. Acting normal, acting not nervous, <laughs> acting happy. The acting was good, but it goes deeper than the acting. It's a, it's a process of healing. It seems like there's not a lot of caring out there, whether or not that's true, that's the perception. And what I'm gonna take away from this is, you know, that people do care. For me, this, this, the whole process was, was healing. It was really healing. It brought me back in touch with myself. Isolation is probably one of the worst things that one can do for the brain. Because since we are so social uh, in our relationships, we need to participate in human interactions, share our experiences, and that enriches us and enriches others as well. The Lawrence Chamber of Commerce is gathering for lunch this day. How are you? I am fine. Oh, oh nice to see you. You too. The guest of honor, a hometown hero. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Wild. He is defined by his community. It's an honor to be here. One, just because there's a lot of memories in this room. Um, there's a lot of wonderful people that work here. But also because I danced on this floor because I got married in this room. Uh, and they have not let him down. When I was injured, it, it was my support system. It was the community that sent letters and packages and, and prayers and just surrounded not only me, but my family. Um, so I understand the importance of community. Josh is a disabled combat veteran, a Marine who served in Fallujah. And unfortunately, one day we were in a Humvee and uh, I was struck by a roadside bomb uh, that killed two of my guys. Uh, my roommate and my sergeant were both killed. So that was the biggest, biggest thing to deal with. Uh, mentally, a lot of survivor's guilt. Um, lost both of my legs above the knee. Have a bunch of internal injuries. 29 pins in my hip, six inch screw in my pelvis. Nose, jaw, fingers, wrists, all broken. Um, and then the post-traumatic stress disorder and severe traumatic brain injury. Josh would spend two years in the hospital. You can't even internalize it. You can't even understand it. I was like trying to deal with it, but I couldn't, I couldn't realize that they were gone. Like you can't comprehend your legs are gone. It's just something that you never think about. Um, you think about maybe getting killed or something, but you don't think about being injured and coming home. During his recovery, the Colts won the Super Bowl. Jim Ursay and his team visited the president and then stopped by Walter Reed. He said, Josh, whenever you want to fly home, I'll fly you home. And two, when you get there, you come see me about a job. Jim Ursay's promise gave Josh hope. You think of all the things you can't do. So that promise uh, was so uplifting and, and it had gave so much motivation to me to start working to get out of there to come home. Today, wearing Colts blue, Josh Blyle shares his story about 200 times a year. What did you have going on today? Uh, I did a talk at the Greater Lawrence Chamber of Commerce. A happy ending, yes. Yet it was a call from Josh's sister, a dancer working with choreographer Liz Lehrman, that would challenge Josh even more. I grew up sitting at dance recitals. Uh, 
horrified as a young kid having to go to watch these things one after the other. I mean, I remember seeing them for dance practices and watching ballet and all this and never thought I'd ever be on the other side by any means. Lerman was developing Healing Wars, a show inspired by the role of healers from the Civil War forward. The presence of a veteran became essential and they asked for Josh's help. Being a big top Marine, you know, as you ever think, yeah, I'm in a dance thing, you know, you don't really throw that out a lot. Um, it was, it was very, you know, I, I love the Marine Corps and I've always been, you know, proud of that fact and been an athlete and stuff, and, but dancers are unbelievable athletes. I enjoyed it uh, more than I ever thought I would and it, and it changed a lot of things inside of me. It allowed me to deal with some issues. Uh, that I was trying to hold on to. Josh's involvement was instrumental in the development process, but it had another unexpected benefit for him. I wear my legs almost all the time. I mean, at night I take them off to sleep, um, but I dance without them. And it, I think it was almost, uh, it was huge. It was huge for me to let that go and to be able to be okay with that. And it became very uh, emotional. It became very, um, between Keith and I who, uh, we were doing an interpretive dance, um, and it later developed, it was a struggle um, with my sergeant who had passed away and me trying to, you know, fight those memories. Uh, and it just, I got enveloped by it, and I was just, I loved it. I loved being a part of it, and it was. this very therapeutic um, to let some of those emotions out and to, to kind of almost physically show the struggle that I was dealing with mentally that I hadn't admitted to. At least 20% of combat vets struggle with emotional injuries. But more and more veterans like Josh Blyle are finding solace and a way back home through the arts. I look back on October 15th. That was my worst day by far. I lost two of my best friends. I lost both of my legs and I almost gave up. I almost thought this life would not be enjoyable. But when my community, this community surrounded me, unbelievable the love that I felt. Thanks for being here today. I wish you continued success. God bless and take care. Our goal was to share with you veterans' experiences and successes through the arts. Our hope is that other veterans may see this and feel compelled, feel safe, maybe even inspired to connect with one of the many therapeutic arts offerings in our community or a more formal art therapy program. Remember, we can't always see the disability, but friends and family can. And here are some places and resources which can help. Resources and other veteran stories at wfyi.veteranscominghome.org. Veterans Coming Home to Healing Arts is made possible by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.